start streaming. Okay, everybody, we should be live. This is Jack from tofluency.com. It is Thursday morning, and at the end of this lesson, I'm going to share a new article with you. It's an article written by one of the new teachers here at Tofluency. So be sure to stay to the end, and you can read this new article. It's on the past perfect. It's got lots of examples, and you're going to love it. Now, this lesson is called Describing Sunglasses because this morning what I did was I posted a new picture of myself to my Facebook group, facebook.com slash to fluency. And I asked people to just describe my sunglasses in one word. And I posted this an hour ago and it's had 20, 25 comments already. Are you ready to see these sunglasses? Okay, here they are. So these are my new, new-ish sunglasses, okay? So these are the sunglasses that I shared this morning. It's been really interesting to see the comments. I'm gonna share some of those comments with you now. I'm sorry if I keep banging the microphone. My microphone is here and I keep hitting it so it's probably going to make a sound. But let's have a look. I'm just gonna check the comments as well, just bring up the comments to see who is here live. I'm sorry about that. I'm gonna to have to move that microphone. So, Lucho says, I bet you couldn't keep a straight face for long. Okay, so to keep a straight face means not to laugh. So, you know, if there's a funny situation, most people laugh. Most people smile. To keep a straight face is not to smile. To keep a straight face. So imagine that you're in a meeting with your boss and there are lots of people there and someone does something embarrassing. But it's a meeting and you try to be professional. So you have to keep a straight face. You have to keep a straight face. Loads of people in the chat. Oleg, Ty, Heidi, Macrosita, Vivian, Mun Munira, who says it's the first time here. Welcome to you. And Hanin. So this is recorded live for those watching the replay. I'm going to read some more comments now. We also have Emily says, brilliant. We have fashionable, okay? If something is fashionable, it's in fashion. Do you think these are fashionable? Colourful. They're definitely colourful. Stylish. Stylish. Stylish is similar to fashionable in a way. Stylish is more long-term. So a stylish suit is going to be a stylish suit in five, ten years. Fashionable means that at this moment, it's fashionable. Okay? We have amazing. Someone said childish childish so it's like something that children wear elegant i don't think they're elegant hilarious terrific trendy so trendy is another word for fashionable it's very similar to be trendy someone says my voice is low sorry if my voice is low um maybe turn your volume up let me know if my voice is too low patriotic because it's red white and blue the colours of America. So someone said patriotic. Tarsilla says ridiculous. Ridiculous, question mark. Great word to use. If something is ridiculous in this situation, it means they're a little bit over the top. A little bit over the top. Great, great word to use. And then someone said cool. Hussein said cool. And one more. Mohammed said naf. N A F. F, naff, okay? So someone said naff, and that just means terrible, awful, you know, not fashionable, not trendy. I'm going to tell you the story of how I got these sunglasses. I got them uh, two weeks ago, and I was playing in a football or a soccer tournament here in Asheville, and these are made by a beer maker called Oscar Blues. Oscar Blues. 
So they make beer in a place very close to Asheville. And they sponsored the football tournament. They sponsored the football tournament. So they gave money to the football tournament so that they could do things like this. So they could promote their beer at the event. Now, they sold beer at the football tournament, but they also gave away, gave away these sunglasses. So to give something away means to give something for free, to give something away. Okay, and moving forward, I'm going to have more giveaways. Now, that's the noun, a giveaway, all one word, a giveaway. So you can enter a giveaway. But the phrasal verb to give something away for free. Okay, very cool. So lots and lots of people are watching live. It is great to have you. Please let me know if you have any questions about watching English and let me know if this audio is working okay. Can you hear me okay? I'd love to know that. One more thing, you may notice that today I am sitting down. I am sitting down. Normally, I stand up to work. My desk allows me to move it down and you can also move it up. So I can decide if I want to sit down or stand up. Today, I just wanna sit down. For a little while. I went on the trampoline with my son this morning at about 8am and we jumped on the trampoline for about an hour. So I'm feeling a little bit tired right now. But um, yeah, so I decided to sit down at work. I can't find the comments section. One second everyone, here it is. Um, so let's have a look. Any questions about learning English? Marisita, do you have any questions? Jonas, do you? Antonio, Antonio de Lima, someone who has followed me for a long time, and it's great to have you here. Jack, what's the difference between killing and murder? Okay, so kill, so a killing and a murder. Can't think of a huge difference. To kill someone, to murder someone, very similar. Murder suggests, though, that you wanted to do it before you did it, that you had the intention to kill someone. But to kill someone might be by accident, by accident. Sorry about the uh, the examples there. So Hafez says, um, I'm trying to learn English by myself. Will I succeed? It all depends. It all depends. Check out the playlist on my channel which says how to become fluent in English. Watch those videos. Watch those videos, how to become fluent in English. And you're going to learn what you need to do in order to progress. So, Javez, thank you for that question. Watch those videos. It talks about things like how to spend more time learning English, which methods to use, how to stay motivated, how to come up with a fluency plan. And I'm just gonna put in the comment section as well my book Okay, you can currently get my book for free if you go to to fluency.com slash book. It's called the five step plan for English fluency and it is going to help you. So if you don't have that book yet, you can download it for free. So I said at the beginning, I was gonna share something new with you. Here it is. The past perfect tense, simple, continuous and passive with fun examples. So Lane at to Fluency has written this article for you all. If you go to tofluency.com slash past dash perfect, or just go to tofluency.com and click English lessons, you'll find it there. So Lane talks about what the past perfect is, the structure, examples, the continuous, the continuous structure, and comparing it to other tenses before talking about the passive, which is really interesting. So go check that out. If you're watching the replay, there will be a link in the description. But if I click up here, you'll be able to see the URL at the top of your screen right now. So write that down and go check it out. Past-perfect. 
to fluency.com slash past dash perfect. Okay, so I hope you have enjoyed this lesson. I'm just going to check the comment section one more time. Um, Hanin says, how can I think in English without translation in my mind? You need to get the repetition you need. You need to get lots of input and get the repetition. Think about phrases that you can say without hesitating. Maybe I'm 33. I live in London. I'm from Pakistan. So think about those phrases. You know them because you repeat them often. You've heard them a lot and you repeat them often. The more you repeat phrases and lots of different types of phrases, the more you'll be able to use it in a flexible way without having to think too much about the rules. Vivian says, what days are your classes live? Um, at the moment, it's very random and very spontaneous. There are very specific reasons for this, and that's mainly because my wife and I are expecting a baby any time now. So I can't plan, and I have to help out a lot at home. So in 2017, what I'm going to do is to have regular live lessons. But for now, it could be in the morning, it could be the, in the afternoon. I'm just doing them when I can. So hopefully that has helped you. Munira, I follow some teachers of English and you are definitely the best one. Thank you so much. If you enjoy my lessons, please like and share this video. So if you do enjoy my lessons, like and share. Hoon says, how can I practice speaking English with a native teacher? You need to make friends. You need to find people who want to speak with you. Or you can pay for lessons as well. But there are many ways that you can practice with native or proficient speakers. Don't just look for native speakers. Non-native speakers as well. But you want non-native speakers who have a high level. And there are lots and lots of non-native speakers who have a very high level. So go out there, make friends, and put yourself in situations where you can practice. Mario says, can you speak up please? I'm sorry, is my microphone not very loud today? Um, I apologize if that's the case, if you can't hear me, but please let me know. If you're watching live, let me know, tell me if you can't hear me. Let's have a look. Samira, I'm here for the first time and I really like it. Thank you so much for being here. When I hesitate, I stop for a while. I say, I mean, and go on. Jose, where are you from? Tell me where you're from. That's a fantastic tip. When you hesitate, you can pause. You can say something like, um, like, I mean, those types of things. So, definitely, definitely use that as a tactic. Give yourself time to find the words you need to use. I do this all the time. I do this all the time. There are times when I just can't think of the right word or the right phrase or right sentence. So I pause and then I say it. Mar Maricita, I'm confused about when to use come and go. Come and go, I've made videos on this. Search on my channel, just search come and go. I think I've got two videos on this. But think about come as someone coming to you and you go to someone. My friends are coming to see me today. I'm going to see my friends later. I'm going to their house. They're coming to my house. But there are different expressions that sometimes confuse this. Someone asks, I can't read your name, about different tests like TOEFL. Which is one is the best one to pass? It all depends on why you want to take the test. Okay? Think about why you want to take the test. Why you need it. If you want to go to a specific university in the UK, ask them what test you need to take. If you want to live in Australia, research and ask them what test you need to take to live there. 
Just do the research and find out which one is best for you. Carrie is here. It's great to have you. Jose is from Spain. I lived in Bilbao and then Valencia. I lived in Bilbao and Valencia um, back in 2008, 2009 and 2010. Mariam, do you have a Facebook page so we can add you? Facebook.com slash to fluency. Let me bring that up on the screen and I'll share it with you. Hopefully this will come through. There are my sunglasses. Let me actually share this. So this is the page. If you go to, I'll put it up here. Look at the top of your screen. Facebook.com slash to fluency. Okay. And then this is the latest picture that I just put out there. Um, these are the comments that people talked about. Alex is one of my old students from a long time ago. He says, hashtag take it off. Now with sunglasses, what we would say here is take them off. Sunglasses, shades, scissors, pass me the scissors, pass them, okay? So take them off. But that, that's a very funny post. And you can see here I said, ha ha. So check that out. And if you just join in, be sure to read this article today. It's just been a little bit slow. Safari is slow. Past perfect tense. Look at this up here. Past dash perfect. Written by Lane from To Fluency. She talks about the past perfect. So be sure to uh, to read that today. I'm going to go back to the comment section. Jack, I'm going to work. I would love to stay and watch you, but I can't. Vivian, enjoy work. Thank you for being here. Like and share this video. You are the best, Jack. Thank you, Ayad. Gemma says, I have a big problem when I speak English. I only speak in present simple and past simple. Practice. Practice these different tenses. Um, practice using the perfect tense. I've got a new article coming about the perfect tense soon. Hello from Thailand. Good to have you. You are great. Thanks for your support. You are welcome. Someone's asking where I can get this book. I'm going to share this screen with you so you can get this book. I'm going to just do this. And if you go to up here, five step plan. But in fact, if you just search for to fluency.com slash book, that will take you here as well. It will, it will redirect you. And you, all you need to do is click this, enter your name and email address, and you can download that book for free. I'll send it to your email address. So that's where you can find it. How, how can I improve my English speaking? Okay, just search for Sorry about the microphone. Search for, on my videos, speaking. Just type in speaking and you're going to get about 10 videos that take you through different methods you can use to improve your speaking. So please take a look at that. Strawberry says, we record videos about popular slang words. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about doing something that, that will help with that. You know, I made a video on slang where I said, if you have doubts about how to use it, don't use it. Using slang is fun, but in the wrong situations, it can be very confusing. So learn slang in context, learn slang from TV shows and think about if that's a good situation to use it. You know, when you're speaking, if it's a good situation. So very cool. Uh, when to use tell and say, I don't have a really good explanation about that right now. It's difficult, but get lots of examples. What you can do is you can search for, um, I told you, okay, and I said in Google, and just look at the examples of way people use it and try to internalize how to use that in a good way. Alim is here, good to have you here, Alim. Um, Michelle is here from Poland. Very cool. I've never been to Poland, but um, I know many people who have. Alim is from Russia. Alim is from Russia. 
Very cool. Um, never been to Russia. I've had a lot of students from Russia over the years. Um, the person I just showed you on my Facebook page, he took IELTS lessons from me about three, four years ago. And now he is in Australia. So he moved to Australia about three years ago. Ayad says, how can we motivate ourselves? Get my book. This book is all about how to motivate yourself and how to use the right methods. A huge way to do this is to think about why you are learning English, why you're learning English, and then remind yourself of why it's important every day. But it's also important as well to enjoy the journey, to enjoy learning English so that you want to do it. If you do things you don't want to do, it's very difficult to do that over the long term. Freddy is here, Freddy Antonio from Ecuador. I spent about two, three months in Ecuador. I actually met my wife in Ecuador. And if you search on my YouTube page, how I met my wife, I have a video about that. Strawberry says, why? Um, yeah, I think you've asked this question before about pronouncing the G in ING. Fishing, watching. You'll hear people say fishing watching and that's in spoken English some people drop the G some people don't use the G other people do it's not wrong um, your teacher is saying if your teacher is saying it's wrong get a new teacher because of course you know people drop the G Santosh why English why is English scary to learn it all depends it all depends depends on your mind frame. It depends on, on what you think about it. A lot of people don't find it scary. But as I just said before, enjoy it. Enjoy the journey. Got people from Turkey here. Um, Peru. I spent um, spent some time in Peru. Um, we've got people communicating in Spanish on here. Saying you made an error. But yeah, I've already corrected it. That's better. I'm just translating Spanish in my head here. Oh, J just a ladies here. Good to see you. <laughs> Sorry, the, the live comments are making me laugh. Gemma's here from Spain. Good to have you, Gemma. Gemma, you s what did you say about my sunglasses on the post on Facebook? Um, I can't remember. You said it on Instagram. Let me have a look at your comment. There's lots of comments now on Instagram. To fluency on Instagram, check it out. I can't find it, Gemma. But you said, you said, hideous. My sunglasses, hideous. <laughs> so that's another good word. Hideous is like terrible. They look awful. They look terrible. But hideous is even stronger. Gemma, are these hideous? We've got Murad from Algeria. Good to have you. Alim says, what do you use in your hair? What do you use in your hair? It's so beautiful. That's very, very kind. Now, I got my hair cut yesterday. I got my hair cut yesterday. I made a lesson on this about a year ago, talking about how we use, I got something done. I got my hair cut I got my car fixed. I am going to get my lawn mowed. So this is when someone does something for you. If I say I cut my hair yesterday, it means I did it myself. I physically did it myself. I cut my own hair. But when I say I got my hair cut, this means somebody else, the hairdresser, cut my hair. Hideous. Yes, Gemma, I've just written it down. Thank you for that. Gordy. Wow. Wow, Gemma, you are definitely talking about things today. Oh, Alim says wax. Yeah, I use this product. I don't remember the name. It's some kind of wax in my hair. It's very cheap. <laughs> it's very easy. It's not that good. At the moment, my hair is short, so it's easier to style. 
when my when my hair gets long it's more difficult to do that so um yeah that, that's what i'm using at the moment samira says i'm enjoying your video very much thank you so much thank you everyone who has joined live i'm gonna see um check my stats wow we've got a lot of time here which a lot of people here which is fantastic um i didn't send out a reminder for this i just went live okay everybody what i want you to do like and share this lesson if you don't have my book already go to to fluency.com slash book you can download it for free and then check out let's go back to the past perfect check out this article here it is written by Lane from to fluency a new teacher here and hopefully she's going to do more lessons for us she wrote how to use the past perfect check it out enjoy it and be sure to leave a comment if you enjoy it leave a comment here and tell me that you like it love to hear from you okay everybody thank you again for being here thank you Gemma Dat we've got Aline Freddy Strawberry Samurai love your name a lot of other people Jocelyn Hell Freddy Vivian um, Miriam Marcos let's have a look other people who've been here um, Makrasita love that name Samira Samira Carrie who joined before thank you all for being here um, I will speak to you all soon be sure to subscribe to my channel like and share it if you find it useful so speak to you all soon thanks for being here bye bye